Now for our story. In the cozy living room of Aunt Mary Lane's farmhouse, a roaring fire leapt up the chimney. Lefty Larkin was sitting in his favorite easy chair while Aunt Mary worked placidly on the patchwork quilt that had once been intended as a wedding present for her niece, Peggy Douglas. But the wedding had been postponed, and Aunt Mary had her own ideas as to how long the postponement would last. Peggy had complained of a headache earlier this evening, had gone up to her room to lie down. For a while, there was silence in the room, except for the brisk crackling of the fire. Then Lefty turned to Aunt Mary, watched her moodily for a moment as she made her precise, neat stitches. At last, he sighed, a long, heartfelt sigh, which caused Aunt Mary to look up at him in concern. Boy, Lefty, what's the matter? You sound like a small boy who's just found out there's no Santa Claus. I was just thinking. There's no need for you to rush ahead with that quilt. No telling now when there'll be any need for it being finished. Well, you never know. But you know how I am. Once I get a thing started, I like to keep on going until it's completed. Yeah. Well, I only wish... What, Lefty? What's bothering you tonight? Oh, everything's so up in the air, with Nicholas wanting to postpone the wedding. Well, you know how I feel about that. I think it's very wise. I know. And I sure wish I agreed with you. But I was so glad to think that Peggy's life was going to be settled. That she'd be married to a nice young man, starting out in life for herself. But Lefty, just getting married is never the answer. It has to be the right person. Sure, but for my money, Nicholas Dorn is the right person. Well, apparently Nicholas himself isn't so sure about that. It's the same old story. Every time things start to look up where Peggy's concerned, and every time her life begins to take on some sort of, of shape, that Calvert gang upsets the apple cart. But Lefty, they... Uh, I know, I know, they didn't do it directly this time. But you know darn well, Aunt Mary, that Nicholas Dorn would have gone ahead with the wedding plans, except that he got this idea in his head that Peggy's still in love with Bill Meade. Perhaps she is. Well, Peggy ought to know whether she is or not. She's never said anything to me. There's something funny about that Calvert thing, too. I don't understand. Oh, now what? <laughs> you are in a mood tonight, aren't you? Yes, I am. For one thing, I can't see why there hasn't been something in the paper about this divorce Bill and Meade and Kit are supposed to get. There must be some reason why they're stalling around. Oh, well, I can tell you something about that. You can? Well, what is it? I had a talk with Bill the other day. Ran into him on the Kenmore Hill Road, just as I was leaving the stones. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, what'd he say? Well, it's, it's rather odd. I confess I don't understand it myself. But it seems Ben Calvert made Bill a, a proposition, you might say. Ben did? Yes. That's very strange. Not like Ben at all. Why? Ben is not a man to suggest a compromise unless... Well, what's the deal? What's Ben up to? Well, it's sort of hard to believe. But the fact is that Ben offered Bill a divorce. That is, he said that Kit would go away somewhere and get a divorce quietly. Well, that's just what Bill wants, isn't it? I suppose he snapped at the chance. No, no, wait. That, that's not the end of it. There's a catch. Ben said Kit would give Bill the divorce on the condition that Bill would relinquish all claim to the baby, to his son. Oh, is that all? Well, it looks like Bill would take Ben up on an offer like that. He doesn't want to be nursemaid to a baby a few months old if he really wants to be rid from, free from Kit. But Lefty, the, the baby is Bill's son. He loves him. He wants to bring the child up himself. Well, that's about like Bill Mead. A man all alone with a kid. Why, he'd never win out in a million years if he tried to fight it out in court. He's surely smart enough to know that. I think Bill realizes that it won't be easy. Yes, you may be right. But this case is somewhat out of the ordinary. You never can tell what a judge would decide. Taking everything into consideration. Well, I'll bet it'll never come to that. No. Bill Mead will jump at a chance to get his freedom. I'm afraid. Why do you say you're afraid, Lefty? You mean because... Uh... Well, Aunt Mary, with Nicholas postponing the wedding, I'm afraid because I, I just don't like the idea of Bill Mead being around loose. He's been enough of a headache married to Kit. But having him free and unattached, anything can happen. Well, Lefty, after all... It's something that's entirely out of our control. 
That's just the trouble. Out of control. Ever since that boy came into Peggy's life, I felt well as if we were all tearing along in a car without brakes, heading for a smash. Now I'm afraid it's just about due. At that moment, the young man upon whom Lefty Larkin's gloomy thoughts were centered, the young man Lefty distrusted as the person who'd make Peggy Douglas so unhappy, was standing innocently in the rear of the Wakefield Public Library, looking anything but the threatening character Lefty depicted him. As Bill Mead reaches up to take a book from a shelf, a young girl, intently studying titles as she moves along, backs into him. Oh, oh. oh I beg your pardon. Oh, that's a... What, Jane Plummer? Oh, Bill, what are you doing here? Why, don't you think I ever read books? Oh, well, I, I come here so often, and I, I just never seen you here before. Well, I'm doing a little research for my job. Be quiet, please. Oh, dear, I forgot. Yeah, talking in the library is a cardinal sin. How is your job, Bill? Oh, going along all right, I guess. Uh, what? I didn't hear you. I said going along all right. Oh. Good. Hey, Jane, let's get out of here. I I'd like to talk to you. Okay, Bill. I'm finished anyway. Well, this is more like it. I'll probably hear about this at school tomorrow. Why? I saw my principal over in the bird section as we went out. <laughs> she gave me a very severe look. Bird section? What was she doing in the bird section? Well, she's an authority on birds. She is? Mm-hmm. She can even imitate all the calls. <laughs> At some of our school programs, Miss Brotherton is a star entertainer. <laughs> the children love it. <laughs> you wouldn't think it to look at her. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I really shouldn't laugh. She's awfully nice, and it, it's just about the only interest she has in life, poor thing. She's an old maid. Oh. Well, maybe she's lucky. I don't think she'd agree, Bill. No. Even though being in love is a lot of grief, somehow I think it's worth it. Yeah, I guess it is. I'm just feeling sort of down in the mouth at the present moment. Well, I understand, Bill. I've... I've heard that the things have been pretty rugged for you lately. Oh, I'll live, I guess. After all, I'm not the only person in the world who has troubles. Look at Nicholas Dorn. Nicholas? I don't know what he's got to complain about. Well, it must have been pretty tough for him, postponing the marriage. You know, I thought it was awful decent of him to tell me. Wait a minute, Bill. What? Did you say Nicholas had postponed his marriage to Peggy? But didn't Peggy tell you? Why, no. Uh, that is, I, I haven't seen Peggy for several days, but I... Well, I saw Nicholas a couple of days ago, and he told me he decided that it would be better if he and Peggy put it off indefinitely. He didn't have to tell me. I thought it was pretty white of him. Yes. Yes, it was. But I... I can't believe it. Oh, Peggy seems so determined, and... Maybe I've misjudged Nicholas after all. He's a swell guy, as far as I can see. Yes, I, I guess he is. I might as well admit it, Bill. I, I tried to discourage Peggy about that marriage from the beginning. I just didn't feel it was right. Well, it's kind of hard for me to talk about it. Oh, I know it is, Bill. Well, maybe I shouldn't say this, the way your life is sort of mixed up at present. But to tell the truth, I, I've never been able to get it out of my head that you and Peggy, well... But you sort of belong together. Well, that's nice of you, Jane. I... I appreciate your pulling for me. Even though I guess I have no right. Well, Bill, I just want to tell you this. I think it's about the best news I've heard in a long time. That Peggy's not going to marry Nicholas after all. Oh, Bill, I'm so pleased about it. Aren't you? But as Jane turned excitedly toward Bill... She was surprised to see a somewhat bitter expression on his face. Yes, Bill was thinking, it was good news. But what could it mean to him, actually? He thought of Ben Calvert's proposition, of the opportunity that he had to regain his freedom. Now that Peggy was free, his own freedom could have meant so much. But then Bill thought of his child, thought how difficult the choice was which confronted him. The choice to be made between his baby son and the young girl he had always loved. 